Perez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Hello, everybody. Look at that sweet shirt. I'm celebrating WrestleMania weekend with a floral pattern because it is, in fact, WrestleMania weekend. And you know, I've given this speech many times. I ain't going down there and getting that building twice this weekend. Too much work, too much hassle. Not doing it. However, boy, have I gotten all sorts of reports from everything else going on down there in Houston. And I got FOMO big time. Holy smokes, I wish I was there. So I am telling you, hereby stating that next year I will go to WrestleMania weekend. But I'm not sure if I'm going to go to the actual WrestleMania. But man, there have been so many great matches and so much great craziness. Matches you never expected to see. And there's more coming up tonight. This this Ring of Honor, Supercard of Honor. There's going to be a lot of big surprises on the show. And pretty much as I expected, Ring of Honor, Tony Khan's Ring of Honor, is going to be utilizing a lot of people that aren't on TV right now for uh, for AEW. So uh, it's actually, believe it or not, the return of Chavo. Remember when Chavo complained that he was he was released and nobody bothered to tell him? I can't remember what it was. And then uh, it turns out he was on a per show deal and, and left. And then I guess, I don't know what he was mad about. But anyway, he's going to be working for Supercard of Honor tonight. He's, uh, he's cornering Bandito. And uh, Tully Blanchard is going to be working the Supercard of Honor show. And presumably he's going to be uh, managing a team. And there's a big surprise planned for the end of the show. So... You know, a lot of people have been uh, very, uh, you know, I don't know what the word is, uh, down on the idea of Ring of Honor being operated as a separate promotion. And quite frankly, I mean, all evidence points to this being an upward battle. But bro, it hasn't even happened yet. So I think we should give it some time. And if it's not working, we can talk about how it's not working. But there's a lot of stuff coming up tonight on the show. I think it's going to be fun. So we'll talk about that, WrestleMania, NXT, everything else that's going on. Back in a moment, Observer Live. And uh, just as we start, I look over the chat and someone's talking about uh, the old saying that the uh, apron's the hardest part of the ring, which of mm. course is is what they say, but I was thinking about it and actually the apron is not the hardest part of the ring. First off, the hardest part of the ring would be the ring post. That's a much harder part of the ring, A. Yeah, and uh, number two, uh, in terms of, of hardness, the apron is exactly as hard as the middle of the ring. The difference is the apron has less give. But I guess it's it's not as uh, impressive to say that uh, the apron is the part of the ring with the least amount of give. Why don't they just? Which say actually also the... isn't true because that's also the post. Why don't they just say it's the most dangerous part of the ring? It's not. I mean, the post is. No, wait, hold on, time out. Why don't they just say that though? Because you don't see moves all the time getting move, you know, used off the post, but you do see them getting done all the time off of the apron and the chance that somebody slips and falls to the floor, the fact that, you know, there's an edge to the apron that you don't have in the middle of the ring that somebody in theory could fall against, hit their face against, bust them wide open. You could make a case and call it like the most dangerous part of the ring and it would make a lot more sense. But it would be a bad case, Mike, because the the padded part of the ring actually goes down. So so that uh, edge that you're talking about, the edge is not exposed. Well, that's unless true, you're in but some Brian, really horrible ring. But how many people what know if you that? were standing on the post <laughs> what if you were standing on the post because you're going to do a dive from the post yes and i split your legs and you crotch the top of that skinny ring post uh-huh that's more dangerous than the apron well it's it's more more painful in it a lot of sure ways sure is it's uh yeah that's well, what i started the show with today everybody yeah what well, well, Ole anderson here just stop doing everything bill watts put the move the the pads off of the floors again nobody do, do anything off the top rope or anything on the apron leave the wrestling inside the ring that's what the blackpool combat club would want all right well here's uh here's the news everybody um i think there's some stuff happening this weekend ho 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 Hello. it's <laughs> wrestlemania weekend everybody and uh here's here's what's going on we got wrestlemania night one becky bianca Ray and Dominic versus Miz and Logan Paul, Drew versus Happy Corbin, Usos versus Shinsuke Nakamura and Rick Biggs, uh. The New Day versus Sheamus and Ridge Holland, with Butch, Seth Rollins versus Cody Rhodes, Wait Charlotte a Flair. You sure? Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey, and then of course for uh, 
Well, you know, keep in mind, everybody, yes, it's going to be Cody Rhodes, but it, this, you know, you guys remember uh, that, that WrestleMania where Randy Orton faced The Fiend? Yes. And, uh, you know, they did all of these angles and storylines with Randy Orton and The Fiend, and, you know, Randy Orton, like, burned his house down or whatever. I, I can't remember face. who was this storyline, because Randy Orton's burned down, like, nine houses. But anyway, it was totally set up for The Fiend to beat Randy Orton at WrestleMania. And uh, the day of the show comes, and, uh, like, right before the show went off the air, Vince just decided, eh, hey, Randy's not going over RKO. <laughs> Even though they'd done an angle, like, a week earlier on TV, where Randy Orton hits him with an RKO, and The Fiend didn't sell it. So that was part of the build. Randy Orton hit the RKO, and The Fiend didn't sell it. So then they go to WrestleMania, he hits one RKO, and The Fiend's a dead body, and he pins him. So anyway... Bro, uh, he what, got hit in the face with a fireball and was healed two weeks later, okay? I mean... Well, the point of, is it's stupid to no-sell it on Monday, and then it's a finishing move on Saturday or whatever. Look, the whole thing, everything they did with that was stupid. But he, one thing that has not been stupid, although maybe it has been stupid, but I found it to be entertaining, has been Seth Rollins going through different pictures on his Twitter over who the opponent may be, right down to Marco Stunt being one of those people. Well, so. you know, Marco Stunt is, uh, you know, he's out, so... He's got some time they, on his they hands. Could, uh, you could see him flossing after yeah. Seth comes out. <laughs> so anyway. Can you imagine? You know what's going to happen is, is uh, <laughs> you know, Vince has been building up this mania card, building up this mania card, building up this mania card. He's got this tunnel vision. And so uh, Saturday is going to come. And he's going to sit up and he's going to go, wait a second. A April, a end of this month is uh, WrestleMania Backlash. Mm-hmm. We can't have. We gotta save something for that show, and he'll go down the card and change like nine finishes, and nothing will make any sense. But we'll have we'll have you know lineups for the uh, for the next show. Anyway, night two, oh night one uh, Charlotte and Ronda, and then night two Zelina and Carmella versus Sasha and Naomi versus Rhea and Liv versus Natty and Shayna, Johnny Knoxville, Sami Zayn, Pat McAfee, Austin Theory, R.K. Bro versus the Street Profits. And Montez Ford, or Angelo and Montez, and the Alpha Academy. Then we got Edge versus AJ, Lashley versus Omos. Maybe Lashley can be managed by Holly. And then we got Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns to unify the titles. In the morning, which I'm told is actually 10 a.m. Pacific, <laughs> like that's going to make a difference to me. We got Toxic Attraction versus Raquel and Dakota for the women's titles on the pre show. Carmelo versus Santos versus Solo Sokoa, Grayson Waller, Cameron Grimes, multi-person ladder match for the North American title. Tommaso Ciampa, Tony D'Angelo in Tommaso Ciampa's last match. We got Mandy Rose, Cora Jade, Io Shirai, and Kaylee Ray for the women's title. Imperium versus the Creeds and MSK for the tag titles. L.A. Knight versus Gunter. And Dolph Ziggler will be facing Braun Breaker. And don't forget tonight, we have got the Ring of Honor Supercard of Honor show, promoted, booked by Tony Khan, Jonathan Gresham versus Bandito with Chavo Jr. That is going to be a winner-takes-all champion versus champion unification match. The man who never lost a title due to COVID versus uh, the current uh, champion. We've got the Briscoes versus FTR for the tag titles. Swerve Strickland versus Alex Zane. Jay Lethal versus Lee Moriarty. Josh Woods versus Wheeler Yuta for the pure title. Mercedes Martinez and Willow Nightingale for the interim women's title. Ninja Mac and Tully Blanchards, whoever it's going to be. It's a uh, mystery opponent for Ninja Mac. Tully's going to manage this person. And Rhett Titus versus Minoru Suzuki for the television title. So, uh, yeah, a lot of these champions are happy because uh, before Tony bought it, like pretty much all of these titles were just going to be discontinued. They weren't going to be uh, used anymore. But now Tony has taken over. So, like, Rhett's got his belt back and Josh Woods is a champion again. So I'm sure they're very happy about all that. So there you go. We'll see if they are after tonight. <laughs> you know, Wheeler Yuta, is he still the IWTV champion? I could see him uh, defeating Josh Woods, taking that pure title. Well, that would be bring, Brian Danielson now. Uh, Brian, well, you know, taking that title, bringing that thing over to the Blackpool Combat Club or, or wanting to bring it over to them. I, I think that would be a fantastic idea. And one thing is for sure, over the last couple of years on Indies, 
you know, a couple of guys have had monster years, and they usually have great weekends, WrestleMania weekend, and Yuta and Lee Moriarty and Daniel Garcia over the last couple of years have been guys who have really broken out, and they've gotten their flowers and their just desserts at the end, as all three of those guys are on AEW TV. Um, Speedball Mike Bailey, as soon as he was clear to come back to the United States, people were really looking forward to what his schedule could be like. And he has already had a monster year this year uh, in the first quarter. And he had a match yesterday against Bandito that looks like it's the front runner for, depending on what you thought of some of the blood sports stuff, uh, it's the front runner for match of the weekend so far. And they won the $5,000 bonus that they had at the Mark Hitchcock show last night. So he's probably going to continue to go on and have one hell of a weekend, and he's probably somebody that may not be a big name to some of the people listening, but he's somebody you want, might want to keep your eye on. All right, if you want to text us here today, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Dave's going to join us after the break. Big Dave Meltzer will talk about the new Observer and WrestleMania weekend and all that kind of good stuff. And then uh, I got more news when we come back later, including an interview with... Uh, with Randy Orton that I want to talk about. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Observer.com, Dave Meltzer joining us. And a uh, lot to get into, new edition of the Observer Newsletter. And obviously it's WrestleMania weekend, and the top story here is Triple H and his heart issue, which is noted here in the new Observer. Now that he's got the, uh, the defibrillator inside him, I mean, all goes well, fingers crossed. He should be able to live a normal life for quite a while. Decades, it says here in the Observer. Is that right? Yeah, if all goes well. Yeah, yeah. It, his the problem was if his heart it, it will stop his heart from beating irregular, um, but he does have a heart condition, so it's not like he's out of the water completely. But yeah, if he avoids uh you know avoids stress and eats right, which I'm sure he will do, he should do well. Um, you know, but the idea of wrestling again is out of the question, though, as as he said. <laughs> So there have been rumors that he's going to be around this weekend, that we may see well, he, a public he, he appearance of he is Triple around. H. He is around. He's there. But a public I'm, appearance. Um, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised to see him show up at, at you know, be introduced at Mania. You know, I mean, he was running the, uh, he was one of the people running the tryouts this week, you know, that were going on. And uh, so he's around. Yeah, he was, uh, he the, a lot of the talent saw him for the first time yesterday. So, yeah. He's so is he, is he, I know they've used the term he's back. Obviously he's not going to be wrestling, but even, I would think that even the, the <laughs> former Triple H schedule is not a schedule that would behoove, you know, his health. So, no. so he's back presumably in like a, a, a limited capacity. Um, I don't, <laughs> I don't really have, know the answer to that. I mean, he's been back. His, his job is now involved more in the scouting side of things, you know, tryouts, things like that. As far as, like, running NXT again, um, you know, I would doubt it, but I can't say that 100%. I mean, as far as running, you know, the this, this succession plan in WWE, as far as the wrestling side, if, if something happens to Vince, you know, and he was going to be the guy, um, I, I can't imagine. I mean, he may try it, but it probably wouldn't be uh, the best for him to do that. Uh, and, I, and he may not, you know, I don't want to say he wouldn't be interested in doing it, because I'm sure he'd be interested in doing it, but... I don't know if it would be smart for him to be doing that, something like that. So, I mean, his stamina is lower, which is what he said. And, and other people who've had the same condition have told me, you know, the same thing, that your stamina is lower, but you can live a normal life and you can work an eight to five job. And, and you know, he'll do, he's working a job there already. And um, I'm sure that that, I'm sure he'll keep a job there for as long as he wants to. I mean, and the thing with him is, is, you know, he's got no economic issues. He can quit tomorrow. He's set. Um, but he does, you know, he loves wrestling, and I don't think he wants to walk away from it either. Dave, how does this change, uh, if at all, the the, the plan post Vince? Um, you know, could he serve more as a liaison while you know Stephanie may back off of some of her duties that she does in the business realm and and be more of the day to day, or is it just really well, a matter Stephanie's of not timing? Stephanie's not going to be the person, you know, running creative or anything like that. Stephanie's role is going to be chief brand officer. If it forward. wasn't, then Triple H, who I guess all of us kind of assume, yeah, like would who, be who that is person. it, right? Yeah, honestly, like who, who in the world really is it? 
Nick Khan. Well, <laughs> well it, stop it. it, it, it he works it, better with Steph. It, it definitely won't be Nick Khan. Um, <laughs> Shawn Michaels? Adam Pierce? I mean, we start asking questions like that on who, it's who's a, there it's, to, to... It's a, it's, it's a tough one. Um, you know, right now, right now... Paul would Heyman, Bruce, which would be bizarre. <laughs> right now, right now, it would be Bruce Pritchard. Paul Heyman would be difficult, but not impossible. But yeah, as far as grooming people, you know, the whole thing is they groomed Paul Levesque. And, you know, that wouldn't be a good fit right now. And Paul Levesque lost a lot of points with the NXT, with the NXT AEW fight anyway. Um, so, um, but they, it's not like that there's this replacement right there waiting. Um, I can't see and Sean. And even Bruce Pritchard. I mean, this guy's in his 60s. Yeah. Bruce, well. and, and he's had, and Bruce has had multiple heart attacks. Yeah. Um, and um, I don't see Sean as being the person for that role. Um you know, plus the plus, I don't, I don't know that Sean wants to devote, you know, because that, that is, is the that's person there story. right now inside the company. Is there a person there? Would they dare look outside a company that's always been so close but, like that? Would they dare look outside? Um, you know, then the, the problem is, is that wrestling hasn't created guys like that, that have that. And, um, they haven't trained guys like that, but I would think that it would be someone. Um, you know, we could look at the agent staff or whatever, but I think it'd be someone. I don't think they would look outside, because because you know, as as you know, they don't consider experience outside to be meaningful because if it's not in WWE, it doesn't count. So I don't think that they would. I mean, you know, would it, you know, like if Eric Bischoff hadn't so spectacularly flopped the last time, it it could have been him easily because that's what they would look for: someone who has experience in that, and you got. Eric Bischoff or Jerry Jarrett, and Jerry will be, you know, Jerry's older than Vince. So, um, you know, and and I, I can't see in a second him taking on a 20-hour-a-day job. Um, Bruce it wouldn't be good for, but um, it could be. It could end up with him. I mean, well, Dave, um, I, I, there's, not, I, I there's wonder... not a lot of guys. There's not a long list of guys, put it that way. I was, you know, I was wondering to myself, you know, Hunter was such a, a avid bodybuilder. You know, this whole change, obviously, you know, you, you have your life threatened. You know, you're going to probably think differently. But he's such a competitive guy. The thought of him working an eight to five job is just something that always it's tough for me to actually believe like him sitting at a desk and doing that. Is there a way, I guess, always depending on where he's at physically that you could have. And I know this is going to harken back to a dreaded time with booking committees. But could you have the writers and have have Bruce and bring back a Gabe and have people where he could be at the end, the person to either rubber stamp something or make tweaks and changes, or is he too competitive to be able to sit by and let them do something and then him not give it his all Vince like to say, no, this is what I would do. And, and to change things, you know what I mean? Could he actually back mean. off and be that person just to go, okay, let's do a check mark on what, what the booker is doing. That's a really good question, I, and I don't have a good answer to it because the one thing is, is as he gets more and more comfortable and further away, he is going to slowly revert back to being the person he was before unless he catches himself and goes, no, I will not do this. So I could see if he has no, let's say he has no um, you know, bad escapades in the next year, slowly would he revert back to that, especially if something happens to Vince. Um, but it wouldn't, it, it's probably not advisable, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, but you know, it depends on, you know, a couple of things. Number one, you know, um, I think the ages of his kids, like if it's in 10 years, it's a lot different than if it was now. Um, and I think, uh, the other thing is, is what, what his outlook on life itself is as you get older, you get very, very different outlooks on life and, and. Um, you know, some people, as they get older, the wrestling becomes less important, even for the ones who are immersed in it. I mean, I know people who were immersed, immersed, immersed in wrestling. And now when they're, you know, in their 60s, put it this way, they don't even care about it. So, you know, in 10 years, will he be that person or will he be or does, does wrestling completely define him as a person? And if it does, you know, which is like, like, say, a Ric Flair, which is a bad example, but a good example in, in, in what I'm saying, in the sense that. There's no other way, and he's going to want to keep doing it no matter what, even at the expense of of risking his health. And I don't, I don't know. I don't. I think I know he's a smart guy. I know that personally. He's a smart guy, but where his mind will be 
in and 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 body will be in 10 years it's it's a we, we don't have those answers anything new with the wrestlemania coming up tomorrow i mean nothing really i mean it's it's here and uh i'm i'm really intrigued on how they're gonna you know what i'm intrigued by this year more than it more than almost any other year is news outlets afterwards like acting like that there's 180,000 people at the two shows you know what i mean because it's like i i presume that they're going to exaggerate the number the most in history and and it will be an obvious exaggeration but i think that you know i've i've already seen like you know people talking about 100,000 people at, at both nights and it's just like dude they're they're barely at half that sold right now you're telling me that they're below 55,000 sold uh, they are below fifty five thousand sold. They probably uh-huh. will. they will probably they will probably end up a little bit above that. But that's 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 going to be where they're going to end up. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, you know what? This this for them. This though is going to end up co- trying to come across in the mainstream. This is probably going to be their most successful WrestleMania of all time because of all these celebrities and the way that they are going to pitch this. All of us wrestling fans are looking at this, going, "This is the worst built WrestleMania of all time." Oh, I, I don't think the- that. I, I think I think that they've done a great job with. Yeah, with I don't think it's a horribly Reigns. built WrestleMania. No, I think I, it's I think been that... one of the softest. I mean, for sure. I think it's been one of the more lackluster. Even though we've had some really cool things. I mean, well, I, 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 think I think it's been. Generally... I, think it's been strong. I, I actually think it's been stronger than the last couple of years. Um, certainly the hmm. last two or three. I think the last two or three weren't good at all. Didn't have good builds at all. Going back six, seven years. Yeah, there's there've been stronger ones then. But I mean, this is one of the strongest built main events they've had. But as far as the rest of the show, it feels. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't. It's made I don't for feel... the main street. It's made for Sports Center. That's what it feels like. Um, well, that's their. That's what their. That's Nick Khan. That's the, what their business is, is is now. Their business is made for the aura of WWE and selling that to people, just like the freaking Peacock deal. It's not about what numbers you're doing. It's about the the idea of you have WWE and we're a major brand like NASCAR, and uh, you know we can make deals. And that's what WWE is about: is keeping that name and that keeping that name in the forefront. And in that sense, um, they're going to get a lot of publicity coming out of this, you know. Um, uh, and some of it's the celebrities, um, but you know, yeah, I mean, that's that's what they're there for. So I think last year, or when when did they do uh, uh, an extra twenty thousand above the actual number? Uh, they did twenty one thousand above the actual number in the last time they were in Dallas. And okay. I presume that this year they will exaggerate that number far more than twenty. Well, when you 000. have one night, you exaggerate twenty. So you don't add the two nights together and add twenty. You add twenty the first night and twenty the second night. So you're gonna add forty. They're gonna say that there's one hundred and sixty thousand people both nights. That's what they're gonna say. Oh. <laughs> It'll be interesting, yeah. How about that? Well, Dave, I want to thank you so much for doing the show here today. The new Observer is out, everybody. You can grab it at WrestlingObserver.com. Your subscription gets you not only the Weekly Observer, but our whole Observer archive. And, of course, the paper copies, P.O. Box 1228, Campbell, California, 95009. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. What's up, Mike? What? Well... Should I read these exact attendance numbers here? Because now, now you can no longer even play the semantic game. Oh, yeah? Why is that? Because. I'm gonna get oh, the- why? Because Dave Meltzer's reporting something? Oh, now Dave, Dave, is, Meltzer, Dave is, is now an guy? unreliable source. Oh, wait. Because okay. he's let, paid by oh, Tony let, Khan. And let me guess when these numbers aren't right. Let me guess. Plans change. Is okay. that what's going to happen? At press time, the oh. first the first night of WrestleMania... Just under 53,000 paid, it says here. And the second night, the number just under 52,000. Mm-hmm. So they've done 53 and 52 for the two nights. Yeah. After mm-hmm. I said they were going to do 55, and I was ridiculed and mocked, chastised, month after month. And now here we are. Look are at these that. the final numbers, Brian? Well, I mean, they'll sell some tickets in the next couple of days. But oh, you think is they're going to sell? be a ten thousand walk up? What do you think this huh? is? A Santo match? The- <laughs> <laughs> hey, once again, they run you know Houston or Dallas or San Antonio, and they have to rely on Rey Mysterio Jr. and they don't have any ideas for a mask match, and they have no ideas for a Latin American superstar and. 
just once again, here we go with that one. Next year in L.A., probably we will be the same way. Uh, Humberto, I guess. Remember him? Uh, you know, him and... Do you remember that? Huh? What's that? That should have been, been my 2022 prediction. I could have got two rings. <laughs> oh, God. I'm still going to reward myself for this one. I don't need to wait. <laughs> I like, how, I like. By the way, I like how the worm has turned. You're dealing with a bunch of sick kids now. All of a sudden, boy, you know that trip out to a sunny, warm place to enjoy the weekend with a bunch of people that will idolize me and throw money at me doesn't sound too bad, now does it, old man? <laughs> idolize and throw money at me? Mm-hmm. Lol. Uh, yeah. <laughs> by the way, that reminds me. I'm doing uh, WrestleMania weekend cameos. I know. <laughs> I know a lot of you listening right now are going to get together with all your buddies to watch WrestleMania. What would be better than during one of the 85 video? packages that go an insufferable amount of time i will do a cameo for you guys you and go. you can you know you could actually do multiple cameos like every time there's a video package i could do a cameo talking about some match or whatever but yes f4w online on cameo get your wrestlemania weekend cameo requests in now so i can make sure to get them done in time for the big show I, yeah, I would not suggest ordering a cameo every time they have one of those, you know, insufferably long segments because you'll be broke. It's like a drinking game, you know. Every time Brian brags about himself during one of those cameos, you take a shot and you'll be drunk like thirty seconds. I never into brag the about myself unless I need to bury somebody else. Really? Which hey, I'm what are you the host of? Regularly? Did you write any books? Yeah, I did, actually. I think those people you know the what they're getting if they're the getting Texarkana Brian Alvarez. Titles? Do you think there's anybody out there who got a Brian Alvarez uh, call for somebody that didn't know what they were getting? Like somebody's mother is now getting, and you have to run I down mean, your list of accolades, all of the books you've written, all of the shows that you host. That's needed? Well, to be honest, my presumption with many of these cameos is that the recipient has no idea who I am. So I, I make sure that I explain it. Now, listen, I got to read this because this ties into yesterday. And uh, Randy Orton was a guest on Thursday's Pat McAfee show and talked about difficulties working with wrestlers from NXT. His program with Bray Wyatt and Edge's return. Orton noted that Edge's return has been refreshing for him because many of today's performers are not as focused on protecting their opponent. There's an art to what we do, and a lot of guys have lost that art, Randy Orton said. When Vince was on, he talked about your number one priority, above all, being protecting your opponent. That's not taught necessarily in NXT. I know that because I've been in the ring with guys that came from NXT, and they don't know what the F they are doing. It's unfortunate, but that is just how things are changing. He spoke about working with Edge, allowing him to tell a story in the ring. I can trust this guy. I can give this guy my body in this ring and tell this story, and I don't have to, in the back of my head, worry about him only being concerned with looking cool in that ring and hitting the F out of me and taking my head off. Edge made me realize that I can go 45 minutes with a guy that knows what the F they're doing. What are these other guys? Where are these other guys that know what the F they're doing? He spoke about his program with Bray Wyatt. Remember we talked about that earlier? He described it, quote, as a little odd. There were some issues where he was able to do a lot of stuff in the ring for a while. So he, he, there were some sort of health issues. I don't know the, the details, but th- that was one of the things here. Uh, so that got weird, but Bray is a hell of an effing town. A lot of F words in this. Granny better not listen to this interview. For the last year, I've been out there with Riddle. He's only been wrestling for six years, but he just gets it. He knows how to sell. He captivates these people. He captivates me, Randy Orton said. You know, I don't want to be that old guy yelling at uh, at the clouds and everything like that. But, bro, you know what's funny is that is, Randy Orton is absolutely 100% correct. That is what this used to be. It used to be that this was a show, and you pretended to hurt each other. And there was an art to pretending that you hurt each other, but not actually hurting each other. And, bro, I don't know when that changed, but uh, I have heard, and I'm sure that uh, many other people listening to this who might be in the business have heard the same thing, that uh, in, in developmental, these, these wrestlers are encouraged to lay it in. 
They are encouraged to lay it in. I remember the first time I heard that, and I just thought, man, I'm too old for this. I'm out. And uh, luckily, you know, I came back from matches with, like, the Rock and Roll Express, who don't lay it in. But holy smokes. Even, you know who actually was uh, uh, light as a feather? Hate to kill his gimmick. Nick Gage. Bro, that guy was awesome. And uh, obviously the Rock and Roll Express were awesome. And, and uh, you know, luckily Marco was small. Can't be me that hard. But the point of this is, that's what this used to be about. It was an art to pretend that you were hurting the other guy. But actually, you didn't hurt the other guy. How many times do you think you hear that phrase from WWE guys today? Oh, so-and-so is a night off. Probably most of them don't even know what that phrase is, a night off. It used to be you would work all the time, and uh, certain guys were a night off. They never touched you. You never knew they were there. You guys worked together. Why do you think it's called working? Because you're in there hammering stuff, hammering nails? No, you were working together. That was the point. You didn't touch each other on a lockup. You didn't touch each other on a headlock. I know back in the old days they grinded the ears like that so you'd have cauliflower ears, but that was because they wanted to convince you that it was real. When you actually worked, you didn't touch the guy. So anyway, I feel for poor Randy Orton because he's in there. He's out there and he's a great worker, and he would just love to do it the old way. You can't do it the old way anymore. Now you got to do it the new way. And that sucks for a guy that liked it the old way. Whatever. And I don't want I don't want anyone to tell me that, oh, it looks better when you lay it in. It looks better when you lay it in if the guys suck. If they suck and they don't lay it in and it looks horrible, so they have to lay it in to make it look good, that's because they suck. If they're good, they don't have to lay it in and it looks good. It should be like a badge of honor to be light. That's why they had the light handshake. Remember when Kevin Nash was like, no more light handshakes. We shake hands like a man. Remember that? Well, there was a reason that you did the light handshake. That was part of the badge of honor. You were light workers. Then all of a sudden, it's, let's grab this hand as hard as we can. I remember I'd work with Buddy. We'd do tag matches. Bro, never tag him too hard. He'd just leave. He would jump off the apron and leave if you just tagged him too hard. Because even the tag is supposed to be a work. <laughs> Whatever. Who cares? I'm out. <laughs> I'm not oh, kidding. That's great. No, I've told this story a million times. I am, I'm I've told not this story a million times. <laughs> I used to have long hair, so we'd do the spot where like he'd pull me down by the hair. Mm-hmm. This brother wouldn't even touch your hair. He'd make no. a fist and he'd put his hand on the back of your head, pretending he was pulling your hair, but he wasn't actually even touching your hair. And yes. he'd put his hand there and you'd bump, and everyone would go, "Oh, what a horrible man!" He pulled the hair. He never even touched my hair. Oh, it's like going. That was the way the it used to be done. Going into the turnbuckle. Why does somebody have to grab the back of your head by your scalp and bang your head into the turnbuckle? You're supposed to just put your hand there. And- no, I don't owe Starlight Kid an apology. That's the exact opposite of what I've been talking about. You what are you these, talking about? You think some of these kids on the come up, though, get so many mixed messages from so many people because there's so many people just talking, talking, talking. And think about it, Brian. You came up. In the, the old school, but the thing is, you're old school. There's old school guys who were there teaching you who are old and crusty, who are bitching about you and your generation no, and all didn't. that stuff. Nobody ever complained about me. Oh, well, there's other Find people in other person, places. Find one person, aside from Matt Farmer, not one cent on. <laughs> one not, time. I don't, look, uh, we may be having two different conversations here, but I I think that there may also be a lot of people who get mixed messages because kids, they're coming up to... P U double dollar sign Y, you know what I mean? And you get people, they got to lay it in. You need to learn and pay their dues. You need to do this. You need to do that. Then you get other people screaming at them. And it's like, you know, a lot of it is probably where you come up, the area you come up, the first couple of training schools you go to, you know, and, and how people do things. Some people get Hindu squatted to death. They look back and go, what the hell? I didn't need that. And then other people go, no, I absolutely needed that. Every kid needs to go through that. And every kid needs to get stretched and all this other stuff. It's like a lot of people just get a lot of mixed messages and then they just talk. <laughs> this guy goes, Dynamite Kid used to lay it in. Yeah, people hated him. <laughs> Yeah, it's fun when you watch him on a videotape, but when you were in the ring with him, it wasn't fun. That's Mick Foley's front teeth. Holy smokes. I remember I went up to train with Lance uh, before I had a match with, uh, this was a long, long time ago. This was probably a a decade ago, and uh, we got his ring and everything like that, and uh, I did the arm drag, and then I put him in the arm bar on the mat, and uh, there's an actual arm bar on the mat where you like hyperextend the guy's arm that way. 
And uh, I put him in this thing, and I didn't touch him, okay? But he still yelled at me. He goes, don't do it the shoot way. And he showed me the worked way. And his point was, yeah, you didn't put it on tight. But if something went wrong, you'd hurt my arm if you do the yeah. fake if you, if you do a, 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 the real version, even if you're light. So he showed me the fake version, where even if you mess it up, you can't hurt his arm. I was like, wow. My mind was blown on that one. And as you know, it takes a lot for my mind to be blown. <laughs> How many times does Rip Rogers blow your mind? He just swore a lot. <laughs> hey, hey, you had a Pat McAfee on display there. Who do you think is going to win that? What, Pat McAfee be, and Austin Theory? Yeah, I would think it would be Austin Theory with Vince making an appearance, but I mean, you never I, know in this company. I, I don't know. I mean, I would presume. Listen, let me tell you one thing that's abundantly clear, okay? Whether you all see it or not, and I would bet yeah. most of you don't, Vince sees this guy as like a John Cena, this Austin Theory. And there's sure. a reason he's grooming him, and he's always there in his segments, and like that's, that's what he sees in this guy. And so, you know... Maybe he wants to teach this guy that you also have to be able to lose. So, you know, Pat McAfee will get the win. And it's WrestleMania. Make people happy or whatever. But uh, I, I I would presume Austin Theory is winning. I think, I think Alpha Academy wins. You stick Gable Stevenson with him. And, and on Monday night, you have Ready, Willing, and Gable. And then they can argue over who's Gable and who's Ready and Willing. Back in a moment, Observer Live. So here's a plan for the weekend. For Observer Live tomorrow. Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern. Jim Valley returns live to the airwaves. I don't think there's going to be any video tomorrow, but there will be Sports Byline audio. So you can check it out at uh, TuneIn Radio, Sports Byline. You can go to sportsbyline.com. There's there's a million ways to listen. So that is uh, that is tomorrow. Or you can just use the link that I put up on my Twitter every day, at Brian Alvarez. If you go up there right now, there's a link to the uh, Sports Byline audio. So that's tomorrow. And then uh, Sunday is uh, Andrew Zarian. And uh, as far as, like, subscription stuff, if you're a subscriber to WrestlingObserver.com, it will be me and Vinny Saturday, WrestlingObserver.com and Video.F4WOnline.com and Twitch.tv slash F4W Video, all video platforms tomorrow night. Uh, Dave and I later, uh, audio podcast only, WrestlingObserver.com. That's late Saturday night. Sunday, it'll be myself, Vinny, and Craig, uh, Twitch, YouTube, and WrestlingObserver.com. And uh, Dave and I, WrestlingObserver.com. And then uh, Monday back here with Observer Live and everything else. So uh, there's going to be a million other things as well. But uh, that's the Observer Live schedule and my schedule off the top of my head here. So uh, you can check that out this weekend. And yes, WrestlingObserver.com. Sign up. Get the Observers, all the audio podcasts, the libraries for both audio and uh, newsletters. And video.f4wonline.com and twitch.tv slash f4w video. You can find all of this stuff on my Twitter at Brian Alvarez or at WrestlingObserver.com. Mike is at Sempervivi, and uh, that's the plan. So uh, enjoy your WrestleMania weekend, everybody, and we're out of here. Thanks, Mike, as always. Callers and listeners, over to the studio. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.